Hellblade is quite possibly one of the most striking games we've seen in recent times, with a mixture of post-processing and impressive dynamic lighting effects really helping to create a world that is both surreal and captivating at the same time. Backed up by complex character modelling and intricately detailed environments, it's quite an achievement for a small studio working with a relatively limited budget. And indeed, after playing the game on PS4 Pro with its dynamic 1440p resolution, I was particularly excited to get my hands on the full fat native 4K experience via the PC, while also aiming for a slick 60 frames per second update. It's potentially a game changing upgrade that should really showcase Hellblade at its very best, with the impressive visuals backed up by ultra low latency gameplay. But here's the thing, right now there are some significant bugs that really prevent us from doing so. For example, something as basic as switching to your desired resolution is extremely difficult to do in Hellblade. The issue is that the game often locks at a specific resolution and makes it impossible to change. For example, when hooking the game up to a 1080p compatible display or capture device, the game remains stuck at 720p. We could do nothing to adjust the resolution above this. However, all of the individual graphical presets, well, we could change those and this would in fact take effect. Likewise, hooking the game up to a 4K TV or capture device rendered us limited to just 1080p resolution infuriating and not something that the consumer should really have to deal with. What's interesting here is that initially the game does indeed appear to boot up at the correct resolution 1080p or 4k but after the opening credits appear the game resyncs and then gets stuck in whatever resolution it decides to give you. In this case I have a feeling this is down to the game reading the display's max resolution flag and then uses this to set the maximum selectable resolution in the game, even if your display can actually go higher. Which means we're not able to get the full fat 4K or even 1080p outputs with displays that handle these resolutions. Obviously this isn't something that will happen with every display, but it's definitely something that needs to be fixed ASAP, so hopefully Ninja Theory are on the case with that one. But for this feature what it meant was instead of targeting 4K60, instead I turned my attention to 1080p60. It's by far the most common setup, and with reports that Hellblade is an incredibly demanding game, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what GPU hardware is required. With that said, let's get on with it. What does it take to run the game at 1080p60, and how does PlayStation 4 and indeed Pro fare in all of this? In terms of the basics, getting a native 1080p on the PC does indeed improve image quality over base PlayStation 4, simply because the PS4 code runs with dynamic resolution. And that's also the same if you're playing on PS4 Pro on a 1080p TV, whereas on PC it's always locked. No matter what's going on, you're always getting consistent image quality. Unfortunately there's no resolution slider on PC, so it's not possible to use downsampling via in-game menus. You're going to have to try and force that using your GPU control panel, but if you run into the resolution locking bug then this simply won't work at all. Really the biggest upgrade by far is running at 60 frames per second, and this is definitely a game changer. Not only is the animation a lot smoother and more fluid, the controls feel much snappier. This means everything from the camera pans to the button presses during combos and attacks just feel a lot more natural to play, whereas the 30fps or uncapped frame rate on consoles mean that the controls do feel a fair bit weightier. And of course the 60fps mode on PS4 Pro tends to hover around at 900p, so PC delivers better image quality and much smoother frame rates. And really by far that's the biggest upgrades here. Essentially with the PS4 version, that game is already running near maxed out. PC offers up just a few little extras, for example, shadow quality on PlayStation 4 is set somewhere between high and very high, while ambient occlusion is also slightly dialed back, leading to thinner coverage across the scene. Though the actual quality of the shadow rendering appears very similar in terms of sharpness and refinement.
post-processing also looks to be dialed back from very high to high and I get the sense that perhaps view effects, the quality of the visual effects at a distance may also be taken down a notch to high on PS4 as well, though this is really difficult to actually spot. The end result is that the PC version running in very high only offers up a mild refinement over the PS4 version. That is to say the game looks great in terms of the raw visuals across both platforms, with PC owners really getting the boost here in terms of the slick 60fps update and a nice consistent resolution. So on that note, what does it take to run the game at a locked 60 frames per second? Well we're kicking off here with the GTX 1060 with two distinct presets. The first is our custom setting which is PS4 settings. Basically everything is set to very high except for post processing which we knock down to high and view effects also down to high. Shadow quality we left at very high because this didn't impact on performance so we are getting a slight boost over PlayStation 4 here. And the results are quite interesting. For the most part the GTX 1060 can deliver us a solid 60 frames per second through large stretches of the game and there appears to be quite a lot of headroom as well. So it's highly unlikely you're going to be seeing much in the way of variances in overall smoothness while playing. However when it comes to scenes with high use of post processing or physics based effects then frame rates do drop below the desired 60 frames per second mark using PlayStation 4 settings roughly into the mid to low 50s and this means that you're just not getting a super smooth experience at all times. In this case if we drop down to the high settings on PC taking a small hit over the PlayStation 4 in terms of shadow and foliage quality then we do get a little bit closer to hitting 60 frames per second but ultimately not that much. In order to get closer to our 60fps target we'd need to drop post processing down to medium and reduce the view distance as well, thus introducing a little more popping in the distance. Which means that we'd be reducing the visual experience over PS4 just to get 60 frames per second, something that I really didn't want to do. On the flip side I'd still argue that performance here is actually pretty good. And what's interesting is even when we match PlayStation 4 settings, the GTX 1060 still has enough grunt to exceed what PS4 is doing at 900p on PS4 Pro in its 60fps mode. So I think the experience is good enough if you want to hit 60fps for most of the time while tackling console quality. But if you want to get an absolutely perfect 60 frames per second without compromising on settings below PS4, then you're going to need a faster GPU. In this case we swapped out the GTX 1060 for the GTX 1070 and that does the job nicely. Not only can we get a rock solid 60 frames per second, we have more than enough headroom to go above to fully max the game out by switching over to the very high preset. It's the complete package and the best part is that a rock solid 60 FPS at 1080p is achievable. Now I will say that having to use a GTX 1070 to achieve 1080p 60 is kind of a, a bit higher spec than we'd really like to see. The 1060 has proven itself on other games such as Battlefield 1 in order to deliver a better than console experience at 1080p 60. But Hellblade is a lot more demanding and it requires considerably more GPU power in order to deliver high frame rates at 1080p while keeping up to PS4 standards or exceeding them. The Nvidia cards then deliver a decent setup for playing at 60 frames per second at 1080p, but what about the AMD side? Well swapping out the GTX 1060 for the RX 580 and the results really aren't too dissimilar. Running with PlayStation 4 quality settings on the right, the custom preset, then we can get 60 frames per second for much of the time. But just like on GTX 1060, those demanding moments where physics based elements and post processing really kick in, send things dropping down below. And in order to even out performance in this area, you'll need to drop settings down a preset to high. Even then it's not quite enough to deliver a locked 60 FPS at all times. But it does help to reduce the unevenness we get in certain scenes. 
Like with the GTX 1060, I don't think performance is too bad here, and really the game spends enough time at 60fps to make the experience a highly enjoyable one, and I don't think drops into the mid 50s are particularly impactful on gameplay, although it would be nice if there was enough power here to deal with them. As for which GPU gives you the best experience, well to be honest at times they're pretty evenly matched, it kind of depends on a scene by scene basis. Here both cards are running with PlayStation 4 quality settings and what's interesting is that some areas see the RX 580 get a boost while other areas see the GTX 1060 come out ahead. Although that said there are times where the GTX 1060 does have a slightly extra headroom. It is scene dependent of course, but you could argue that there is slightly higher frame rates on average across the board with the GTX 1060, so the experience is just a touch smoother. But anyway, really if you want to get an absolutely locked 60 frames per second and do that using higher settings than PlayStation 4, the maxed out very high preset, then I'd suggest going with a GTX 1070 or even the RX Vega 56. Both cards are capable of handing in the desired locked frame rate we want to see. In that respect, I kind of feel that perhaps the PC version isn't as well optimised as it could be. There definitely seems to be some pretty hefty bottlenecks there, particularly when there's lots of post-processing and physics-based effects on screen. It does mean that if you want to get a great experience at 60 frames per second, you're still going to require some quite meaty hardware on PC to do it. Even so, I do think that the PC version does offer up the best overall gameplay experience. It's certainly superior to PS4 and PS4 Pro in terms of delivering higher frame rates and at a stable resolution. But the issue here is that right now it's a little hard to recommend the PC game based on the problems that people are facing. The resolution switching issue is by far the biggest one, with the game deciding to lock at 720p, 1080p, depending on whether or not it likes the equipment it's connected to, and it's definitely something that needs to be fixed as soon as possible. For now then, if you want the most stress-free way of playing Hellblade at 60 frames per second, then I guess PlayStation 4 Pro is the way to go. It's not ideal with image quality with dynamic 900p, but at least you can just turn the game on, flip the 60fps switch and away you go. Something that you can't really do on PC at the moment. But if Ninja Theory manages to fix the resolution locking issue, then there's no doubt that the PC version delivers the best all round experience. Anyway, I think I'll wrap it up here. If you enjoy the work we do at Digital Foundry then please don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.